NVIDIA has been hacked and a massive trove of data weighing in at about 18 gigabytes in a compressed archive was leaked onto the internet. And included in this leak was the source code for NVIDIA's drivers, or at least part of the source code for things like DLSS. And apparently also the parts of the source code that disable LHR or light hash rate for cards like the 3060 Ti, the 3070 Ti, and the 3080 Ti were released as well. Now, in case you didn't know what LHR is, it's a mechanism that makes these cards much less effective at mining cryptocurrency. So this software lock on the cards capabilities for mining crypto was an attempt by NVIDIA to basically just get crypto miners to stop buying up all of the graphics cards that they would normally be selling to gamers or to people that have desktop workloads that require a graphics card and for the people that aren't using Quadros or their other line of professional GPUs for that work. Because honestly, those GPUs are really, really expensive. Um, but in case you haven't noticed, there has been a GPU shortage for the past few years, primarily as a result of supply chain breakdowns that were a result from different government actions to try and flatten the curve. But while that pandemic was going on, the crypto market was experiencing a bull run. It became much more profitable to mine cryptocurrency. So a lot of people started jumping on it. They started buying these different mining rigs. And this was probably further exacerbated by the fact that so many people were also out of work at the time. And so they probably just decided, hey, let's go become a crypto miner to try and pay the bills. And of course, you had scalpers who would just use bots to buy up as many graphics cards as possible as soon as they became available on sites like Newegg or Best Buy. And then they would sit on them for a few weeks or a few months, and then they would sell them back to people who need them for gaming or whatever at a 50% markup. Now, the source code leak is one thing that does seem to be exciting some people, especially in the Linux community, because NVIDIA's drivers on Linux really suck. The open source Novu driver, it isn't really that great either because NVIDIA themselves, they don't help very much with it. So the developers of Novu are basically trying to write an open source driver for a black box. They're basically relying on reverse engineering, which don't get me wrong, it's one hell of an effort that they're doing. They're actually doing pretty good considering what they have, but it results in the driver still not being quite as performant as the proprietary NVIDIA driver. And even then, those proprietary NVIDIA drivers on Linux still kind of suck. They don't get anywhere near the level of support that the drivers on Windows get, which results in things like screen tearing on Linux and often an overall worse gaming experience on Linux. Uh, also, it's not compatible with Wayland, so you're pretty much forced to use X. And yeah, you don't get as good of a gaming experience, even with games that are natively compatible with Linux compared to the same game on Windows. But the thing is, this leaked software can't be used by the people that are working on the Novu project, just like how the Wine developers, they weren't able to use the Windows XP source code that leaked over a year ago in their project. And I highly doubt that we're going to see some third party anonymous hacker or driver developer group release their own completely open source NVIDIA driver that was created from the source code in this leak because, well, for one, writing device drivers is actually really, really difficult to do and it's going to be hard for collaboration to take place on this because it would essentially be an illegal effort. But here's the thing, NVIDIA, maybe, just maybe, might be forced to open source the driver. So you see the hackers, they claim to have grabbed more than one terabyte of data over a week of time that they were in NVIDIA systems, including things like proprietary SDKs, everything about Falcon, which is NVIDIA's proprietary control processor, 
as well as the passwords and account details for over 71,000 of their employees. And a lot of those passwords have already been cracked. So if you're watching this and you're an NVIDIA employee, you've probably already heard this from whoever runs security uh, at your job, but go change your password, ma'am. And also go change, if you're reusing that password on other accounts, make sure you go change all of those as well. Um, now, what this has to do with NVIDIA's driver's source code is the fact that the hackers are demanding NVIDIA themselves to open source their driver as part of the ransom. What they specifically said in their Telegram channel is, we request that NVIDIA commits to completely open source and distribute under a FOSS license their GPU drivers for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux from now on and forever. They also demanded from NVIDIA a ransom of $1 million. Now, after this initial hack happened, some people from NVIDIA were apparently able to backhack the black hat hackers. Try saying that five times fast. And they apparently installed ransomware onto their systems to try and lock down whatever data it was that they got from them, uh, which is kind of hilarious that we've gotten to this level of corporate cyber warfare. I, I guess it does kind of make sense because over the past couple of years, ransomware attacks have gone up dramatically over 100% from what we've seen in past years. And we've seen how it can end up being a huge disruption, not just to corporations, but to the rest of the country or even the world. Like last year, we saw the Colonial Pipeline hack have these kinds of downstream effects. It caused the price of gas to go up a bit temporarily. But I guess it makes sense now for huge corporations like NVIDIA to set up internal counter hacking teams since the FBI and DHS have historically been very ineffective at stopping or remedying these attacks. But despite the back hacking attempts, the hackers are claiming that they still have all of the data that they stole from NVIDIA, that it was backed up and that it's ready to be released to the people because again, there's supposed to be over a terabyte of data um, that they got from NVIDIA, but so far only about 18 gigabytes have been released. Now, this hack originally happened over a week ago and the hackers were giving NVIDIA until Friday, March 4th to comply with the hackers demands and to pay the ransom. And from what I can tell, NVIDIA didn't pay up but the hackers also have not released the full one terabyte of data that they claim to have. In fact, if we take a look over on Lapras's Telegram channel, that's the name of the group that's responsible for this hack, which by the way, this is the only social media that they have, so any updates officially coming from them should be uh, showing up here. They haven't even been talking about the NVIDIA hack for the past couple of days. What they've recently been talking about is the Samsung hack that they most recently conducted, which also has a torrent available containing all kinds of information, a proprietary information from Samsung, like part one, which is supposed to be a dump of source code and related data about security defense, Knox bootloader, uh, trusted apps and various other items. Part two is a dump of source code and related data about device security and encryption. Part three is various repositories from Samsung's internal GitHub, including mobile defense engineering, Samsung account backend, Samsung pass backend, the front end, um, and then Bigsby, SmartThings, and several others. Uh, part one and two also are supposed to contain highly confidential data from Qualcomm and various other Samsung partners. And all of this data that is available for download via torrent right now accounts to about 190 gigabytes. So 10 times more what we got from the NVIDIA leak. So it's looking less and less likely as each day passes that NVIDIA will actually comply with these demands. I mean, technically they've already reached the deadline. Uh, and if you think about it, it really doesn't even make that much sense from NVIDIA's point of view to go ahead and open source the software because the result of this leak is that, well, the source is already available, but 
source available is very different from open source, okay? All of this information, even though it can be downloaded via torrent for free, is still going to be protected under copyright laws and intellectual property laws, which is why I'm saying that the NoView project isn't going to benefit from this, and you probably are not going to see some open source NVIDIA project spawn from this source leak because anyone who works on that would be breaking the law. Any websites or social media posts that are dedicated to the project would likely get taken down just like Microsoft did with the information pertaining to the Windows XP leak. And, you know, think about it. Think about how hostile Microsoft was towards that. Even I ended up getting a strike on my YouTube channel just for talking about the Windows XP source leak. And with that, we're talking about an operating system that's over 10 years old. So anyone who, was, who for example, makes a tutorial of how to build uh, NVIDIA drivers from source is probably going to get the same kind of treatment. And the developers of a potential open source driver themselves could face lawsuits from NVIDIA. You know, NVIDIA is actually a really powerful company. They recently passed Facebook to become, I think, the sixth largest tech company in the United States. Clearly, NVIDIA have some kind of a counter cyber attack department. That's not something that your average startup has. Um, and if they have a counter cyber attack department, you have to imagine just how big and powerful their legal department is as well. So the source code leak of things like DLSS, I also don't think that that's going to end up helping companies like AMD to develop a competing technology either, because again, this source available code is still legally protected and NVIDIA could very easily bankrupt AMD with lawsuits if they were to try and use that code in their own products. So don't expect a future generation of AMD cards to be significantly stronger as a result of this hack either. But one thing that we might see from this hack is an alternative driver for mining cryptocurrency. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons why I think that might happen. Number one is that there is more of a clear financial incentive for it to happen, right? So creating open source and video drivers so that people on Linux can have a better time with gaming um, on NVIDIA cards, there's just no money in that, right? Like even if uh, Linux gamers were to pool together and try to donate some money for something like this, uh, it probably wouldn't end up being as much as crypto miners pooling together their money to get their hands on a driver that benefits them. And also the way that things have been going recently with some governments banning cryptocurrency uh, means that crypto mining already is kind of being driven underground. In some countries, it's already being turned into a criminal enterprise. So adding in another illegal thing, you know, stealing this proprietary information uh, is whatever, right? I mean, criminals, they already don't follow the law in the first place. That's what criminal means. So developing drivers for crypto miners that has the LHR removed, it could be very profitable. And there's also a chance that whoever ends up paying for this might do so using cryptocurrency. And depending on which one they use, it could actually be very difficult to trace the transaction, <coughs> Monero. <coughs> but even then, it seems like the majority of people on uh, Lapras's Telegram are just laughing at them at at least the price that they're offering for this uh, because they're asking for $1 million to open source or at least to not even to create a driver for crypto miners, but just to release the relevant source code for somebody themselves to create a crypto mining driver. Uh, so yeah, pretty ridiculous price for what it is they're trying to release. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see if by some miracle, somebody ends up buying that and potentially getting us an open source driver out of that. Now, another result of this leak, which doesn't really benefit anyone except for, I guess, malware developers, is that the driver signing certificate for NVIDIA on Windows was also leaked from this. 
So that means that hackers or malware developers, they could create rootkits that are even harder for antivirus to fight because they're going to appear as signed legitimate code coming from a trusted vendor. It could appear as driver code from NVIDIA. And also, in case you didn't know, driver code ends up running at a much lower level in your operating system than just typical programs. So this really could give a virus a lot of control over your system. So for those of you who are using the Windows operating system, you should really watch out for something like this if you're downloading sketchy software and it says that it's signed with NVIDIA because, or by NVIDIA because it might not actually be. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment, hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your day.